If you are going to spend your time as an elected representative trying to overturn the 2020 election, you are not a representative of your constituents. You're a representative of Donald J. Trump. Is MAGA dead? Is MAGAism, is Trumpism, the MAGA movement, the stop the steal, the election fraud, f- is it finally dead? And when I look at it and think about it and feel through it with my soul and my heart, my brain, I think we're seeing it now. I think we're seeing this movement be hollowed out. Now, if we just look at the f- numbers, right? If we say, hey, these elections, I don't like the way the election system is. It's a little funky. I don't love it. It could be better. It could be much better. And there's actually simple solutions that I think everybody would get behind, right? All that being said, if we look at the numbers, Trump backed candidates, handpicked Trump candidates that did not exist outside the Trump Trump ecosystem got beat. Lauren Boebert does not exist outside of the Trump ecosystem. J.D. Vance does and would have won anyways in Ohio, right? Doug Mastriano doesn't exist. He has hitched his wagon to the Trump horse completely, and so many other politicians have as well. Now, Marjorie Taylor Greene won, and I think she was always going to win. She could not really lose. But when we look even at Carrie Lake's race, who was kind of this shoe in for people who were even projecting her to be Trump's vice presidential nominee, right? A running mate, excuse me. People were projecting Carrie Lake to be Trump's running mate. Even though that doesn't make a lot of sense because he needs a stop the steal governor in Arizona. But people were projecting that, right? She's barely going to eke out a victory if she even wins, which is. Crazy. So when what we what we're seeing here, and I'll say it again, if you hitched your wagon to the Trump branded horse, and that's all you have, you're on your last legs. You're not doing well. Now, if you're a candidate who supports maybe some of Trump's policies, Trump in general, but has a profile that exists outside of Trump and MAGA and stop this, the whole thing, right? If you have a profile that exists outside of that, you crushed. You absolutely crushed. We can use uh, Ryan Kemp and Ron DeSantis as examples of that here today, right? Because it was closer. I mean, Greg Abbott, while it was a large margin in Texas, was not nearly the margin you saw in Florida. And I think that's because, for one, Greg Abbott's heartbeat law when it comes to abortion is incredibly unpopular. A lot of my Republican Texan friends were upset about the way they were handling that, whereas DeSantis did the smart thing here. He moved within the Overton window of acceptability among the population, among the majority, right? With a 15-week ban People can get behind that, but like, ah, either I, eh, it's a little bit short, it's a little bit long, but people, can, it's within that wiggle room of acceptability, right? Me personally, I think it's something that should come from the federal level and you have to have at least 10 weeks of access and no more than 15 and then carve out a different thing for chromosomal issues and health of the mother. Like that's a different conversation. If you're, while it may be technically elective and technically an abortion, if your child is, has some serious issues or the th- mother's life is threatened, I don't understand that those are technically abortions. They should be classified as a different thing, right? And we need to have a very uh, pragmatic argument around those things, but we're not adults here, so we don't get to do that. So when we're seeing these Republicans outside of the Trump Trump ecosystem crush, we can see that what stopped the red wave, the levy that stopped the red flood, the red tsunami, the levy that stopped all of that was Donald J. Trump. Donald J. Trump and his arrogance and miscalculations has now cost the Republican Party numerous seats within Congress and governorships around the country. Now, if you want to zoom out and say, well, maybe my conspiracy mind says the Republicans don't really want 
that much power and that much leverage because they're actually gaining more political capital by being powerless and complaining all the time. Maybe. But at the end of the day, what it looks like is a huge disappointment for Republicans. And I think the reason is people are exhausted with Trump and the, the air is out of the MAGA balloon. So as we move over here, I want to, I, I was going to almost start with this, but there are times when Ben Shapiro's commentary, I feel, and this is rare, but I feel it actually speaks for the majority, right? I don't think Ben's commentary generally, I think he speaks for kind of old school conservatism, which is a smaller and smaller group with some resonance in newer conservatives. It's a, it's, he's got a weird audience and, he, and, and I, I actually appreciate it because I, I do try to get a diverse like diet of media. But right here, I think what he's saying is absolutely spot on because here's the thing, and I want to be clear about this. As someone who's not a conservative, I like strong conservative candidates. I like strong liberal candidates, right? I like strong Democrats. I like strong Republicans. I like people that are, you can tell when they speak, like Bernie Sanders, for example, that he's in touch with a movement with people with genuine issues and genuinely connects with people. I want that from politicians because I, because I think competition within elections is actually vitally important. So high quality candidates and candidate quality in general should be of utmost importance. But what we have is Democratic Party establishment backing the most ridiculous candidates from the conservative side because they want an easy win. And when I what I want is a politician to go into this like you would go into a football a football game or a fight be like you know what nobody wants to see an easy win right if you have khabib norman kabedoff whatever his name like go beat the hell out of somebody who's not very good right what does that say about the person what does that say about khabib does that say he's the best fighter in the world but you put a number one versus number two and it goes five rounds and you get a winner out of that well now you know and that's what I want in our politics. I want five rounds. I want candidates coming out of there feeling bloody and beat down and exhausted because they both got a chance because they can both win because they can, they can push each other on issues and challenge each other's ideas. I want to see that. I don't like one party rule like California. I don't like it. And then you have other one party states like Ohio where you can't even get like welfare distributed appropriately because they're so like they're so scared of giving out handouts. It's the weirdest thing. It's like a complete nanny state on one side and then and then complete ineptitude on the other. It's just it makes it makes no sense. And if we had high quality candidates on both sides, that would be less of an issue in my opinion. But let's listen to what Ben has to say here. And uh something I think is incredibly potent. Potent potent? Potent. Potent potables. As I say, if the Republican Party is looking for a model of governance going forward, if they're looking, how do we how do we win races? Baseline levels of competence and then engage in the culture war issues. Competence before culture war. Let's put that on the screen here. Competence before culture war. That is the takeaway. The culture war will not win you national elections or statewide elections oftentimes. Competence will win you elections consistently. Not the other way around. And also, don't alienate everybody on earth with claims that the vast majority of Americans do not actually believe. If you are going to spend your time as an elected representative trying to overturn the 2020 election, you are not a representative of your constituents. You're a representative of Donald J. Trump. And people don't really want that from the representative. They want to feel represented by the representative. But when Trump sucks out all the air in the room and they and your and your constituents feel like you're representing him more than you're representing them because they're over the 2020 election, even though Trump will go to his grave thinking he won that damn thing. Well, then you got a problem. Then you lose elections. You cannot make election 2020 the subject of your campaign in any major way in the United States and hope that things are going to turn out amazing unless your district is like a deep red district. That is one of the messages of this thing. And you can tell, by the way, that there were governors last night who didn't do that and who walked away absolutely clean. Yep. Who did great last night. 
Right? The, the big winners last night were all the people that were kind of at odds with President Trump. They were at odds with the Trumpification of the Republican Party, who are not the out-of-the-box candidates. Those people did a lot better last night than the generalized Republican Party. And the Democrats who are running against the most perceived Trumpish candidates are the ones who actually ended up doing really well last night. Those Democrats ended up doing really well. What does that say? It says that the very first rule of politics, I say it all the time, if you wish to win, make it very hard to vote for your opponent, make it very easy to vote for you. The Republicans spent a lot of time this election cycle making it hard to vote for their opponent, and then they proceeded to nominate a bevy of candidates who made it very hard to vote for the Republican. And that has some downstream effects. Now, when you look to the gubernatorial races, what you can see is that when you make it easy to vote for your own candidate, then your candidates do really, really well. We'll get to more on this in just one moment first. And then we get an ad for gold or something. So thank you, Ben Shapiro. I could not agree more. You saw that. If you, had, if you made it easy to vote for you, yeah. But if you're a hard pill to swallow, no. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's no one. Everybody's tired of the mess. And Trump is a MAGA. I mean, think about this. Can we go back for a second and just think about it, right? Let's, like, let's go back to before the election, 2020 election, right? And people are like, I can't believe that, you know, jo, jo, you didn't really think Joe Biden got the most votes of any president? I do because people were motivated by Trump that much. Joe Biden didn't motivate anybody to vote. He was just a, a placeholder. His job was to not be alive and to calm everything down. Now, what he's done since then has been a shit show. That being said, the motivation was Trump. The reason that there were so many Democrat votes in 2020 was because of Trump. He was handling himself like an asshole. I was so sick of his bullshit. He was making no sense. It was making COVID even more confusing. And it, while, while the... the in the pharmaceutical industry that I despise was just raking in profits during this time, right? Warp speed, all this other bullshit. He was, he was articulating himself so poorly. He was giving the opposition to medical freedom all the ammunition possible. And I was sick of it. And I thought that Democrats would, and a lot of people thought this way, right? A lot of people felt this way. Okay, Democrats are blowing, by the time the election was here, Democrats are blowing COVID out of proportion. Right, many people felt this way, but I thought that was their political strategy. Either they were gonna, oh, we're gonna blow this out of proportion, and then we're gonna win the election, and then in two months we're gonna be like, oh, and we cured it, it's solved, and now we're into endemic stage, which we were already were at, right? We were there. I was wrong. I was very wrong. That's probably one of the worst calls I've ever had politically, because it was a year and change later that they actually, but it's like they they made they made the wrong decision. I what I was talking about was the right move politically. What they were talking, what they ended up doing was moronic. It made no, it, 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 it defied all logic. And then I thought, you know, legalized marijuana, public option, these things that Biden ran on. I'm like, oh, well, we'll see. Because Trump, the things I liked about what Trump did, he didn't even run on those things. He ran on culture war bullshit and it was, it was exhausting. So here we are. Right. So when we look at the whole thing, when we think about that, then we go into the election, then we go into January 6th. Then we got Rudy Giuliani and um, what's her face, that lawyer in the release, the Kraken. It was, Giuliani was at the Four Seasons landscaping play. Like, MAGA is a f***ing mess, guys. You know, all, this whole time, Jared Kushner, the whole time he was in the administration was just grifting so that he could go to Saudi Arabia and take a few billion dollars from them to go into his f***ing fake investment, whatever. And it's like, what? And then, But the same people that ignore that are mad about Hunter Biden taking money from Burisma. When I really think Jared Kushner's profited more than Hunter Biden has, and Jared Kushner wasn't a crackhead, he was actually in the administration pulling the strings and then used the connections he made at that time, right? While he's reading the daily presidential briefings, by guys, Jared Kushner read more presidential briefings than Donald Trump did. And people want that mother to be president again and have Jared Kushner pulling the strings again? Absolutely not. That dude used the connections he made and then went straight to Saudi Arabia and got paid. And you guys are mad about Hunter Biden? Yeah, Hunter Biden's a joke and corrupt and an addict and all these things. But at least I can blame his addiction for some of his poor choices. All I can see in, J in Jared Kushner is, is, is malice and disgust. It's, people don't understand. I mean, I don't, it's not that hard to look at it and be like, yeah, that mother lost, guys. And it's not that hard to look around now two years later and go, wow, that movement's really losing steam. You know, I mean, if we look back, think if we look back, like, take it, let's go a little further back, right? Let's think about um, maybe trends 
that we that I as a millennial dealt with hacky sacks. Hacky sacks were a huge deal for a while, right? It was all the thing, and you could hacky, and how many could you go and do the thing, and like how many times could you kick it on your foot without without dropping it down, and could you do the behind the back thing and doing tricks? That yo-yos, pogs, gigapets, all of these were trends that we had growing up, right? If you're my age, where are they at now? Trumpism, Trump is pogs. It was the coolest f-ing thing ever for childish idiots who wanted to slam things and knock things over and take people's shit, right? But you grow out of it. And hopefully as a nation, we're beyond pogs and gigapets. You know what I mean? (sighs) That's how I feel about it, but I don't know. I don't know, but we will say this. We got this right here from Trump. um, And Shapiro actually tweeted this. I haven't, (laughs) I haven't, it's his friend. I have an exciting announcement I can't wait to share with you on November 15th. I'm going to announce something huge at Mar-a-Lago, and I want you to be there. This announcement will perhaps be the most important speech given in the history of the United States of America. And you could be there with me, friend. (laughs) All you have to do is contribute $5 or more, and you'll automatically be entered to to be the very first person to meet me in Mar-a-Lago after my big announcement, all caps. This offer is exclusive to my most loyal supporters like you. So don't share this with anyone else. <laughs> the first rule of Fight Club is don't talk about Fight Club, right? I'm going to go ahead and take a screenshot of that uh, and put that on Instagram later. Okay, that's fun stuff. Good times. All right. Anyways, so that's where Trump's at. Huge announcement coming up on November 15th, and you can meet him. You can be there to meet him. Friend. It might, this is my favorite line, though. This announcement will announcement will perhaps be the most important speech given in the history of the United States. And you should be there with me, friend. <laughs> Donald f-ing Trump, guys. Oh, man. Yeah. Actually, this episode, this episode is going to upset some people. But it is what it is. You know? I'm not a partisan hack. That's to be sure. And um, I'm sure it's f-ing not a conservative either. If you think that I'm more attractive than Ben Shapiro, then you should probably subscribe to this YouTube channel. I mean, what other political commentator has this kind of f-ing bone structure? Really? Let's be serious now. You have to look at these YouTube videos. You have to look at them. Do I need to say anything else? Watch some more of these videos. Subscribe. Leave a comment. Hit the thumbs up button. This is the only thing keeping me from having to have an OnlyFans. Just to survive. Watch some more content. Hit that thumbs up button.